Der folgende Panel. The following panel will deal with the question of identity of the creative human being, since that, after all, is the center of the Renaissance to come that we have to achieve. But uh, before going into this issue, I would like to remind you of the discussion yesterday. Uh, and uh, from 12 o'clock on, we, we will have about two hours to discuss these uh, questions. Now, unfortunately, I cannot uh, reduce the warning that I had given uh, by one bit. The danger of a coming war is absolutely urgent. Um, the developments of the past 24 hours rather point to us being in a very short term countdown uh, for a military confrontation with all the consequence that I have discussed last night. Um, uh, yesterday, and also my, uh, also my husband, Lyndon LaRouche, had discussed. The conference of the so-called Friends of Syria in Tunisia, uh, Hillary Clinton gave, made a, a, an absolutely disgusting remark when she attacked Russia and China for their veto in the UN Security Council. And it's especially tragic because Hillary Clinton has so far in the Obama administration played a uh, more reasonable role or the role of a more reasonable part of the administration in her um, connection and her relationship to the Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov, where she kept channels open, or at least she thought she did. But apparently the pressure is so gigantic that she joined the British line uh, of calling for regime change for Syria, as has been done for other countries, and also uh, towards Iran. Now, in addition to that, the attacks on the chief of the U.S. general staff, uh, General Dempsey, um, from the British-dominated media, um, the call has been raised that for him to resign, for his utterance, for him calling Iran a rational factor that you can negotiate with. And I can tell you one thing. As soon as Dempsey, if Dempsey were to be uh, dumped from his position, World War III, uh, you're looking right at World War III. Also, from the side of Prime Minister Putin, there have been a number of very direct and clear warnings. Um, he was in Sarov, in the, uh, this uh, closed uh, military city, where he met with military leaders, and he pointed out again that uh, the, the idea uh, that the Russian military capabilities are outdated, that this is a ridiculous concept, and he warned that if Israel uh, were to join th this kind of course, uh, Israel would find itself on the bottom of the ocean very soon. And at another point, he pointed out that the military alliance Russia has with India is, uh, the, is exemplary. And so this is, this is just very clear language. Also, the Los Angeles Times and New York Times featured articles where they repeated the estimate of the uh, national intelligence estimate, this combination of U.S. Uh, secret services, uh, which in October 2011 again uh, repeated their former judgment that Iran, since 2003, does not conduct a military nuclear program. Uh, and in that light, you also have what Dempsey said uh, just recently, that to the best of our knowledge, Iran is not pursuing the 
the uh, development of nuclear weapons since 2003. So this is this is a fight that is extremely tense, and whoever looks at this situation must almost necessarily come to the conclusion that we're on the brink of a catastrophe. And I would ask you uh, to use the call that I published already last November, uh, an international call uh, to stop this development toward World War III, that you download this um, call from our Buzo homepage, which we have in 11 languages, uh, and that you not only sign it, but that you use it uh, in making this a public discussion. And when I talk about the danger of war, I'm not talking about any war in the Middle East. I'm talking about the possibility, the very real possibility, of a nuclear war or a thermonuclear war. And if, if there were any leftovers of humanity, it, it probably wouldn't be very much uh, if it came to that kind of uh, thermonuclear war. So there is the necessity of a complete paradigm shift, uh, a complete paradigmatic turn away from uh, free trade, globalization, and all the other attributes connected to this. Because in the face of this existential threat, if we can't, um, if we can't uh, achieve to reorient toward the highest developments so far in human history. Uh, that means to connect to the human, the image of man that has been developed from the uh, ancient Greek through St. Augustine, Nicholas of Cusa, the Renaissance, the German classic, uh, or the French idea uh, that ranges from Jean d'Arc to uh, the Ecole Polytechnique. Um, to the Gupta period in Indian India, uh, Confucianism in China, and any other high point and high development of uh, a, an individual culture. We need to do what all classical periods or Renaissance periods uh, have done in human history, which is to connect to the highest that mankind has brought forth up until a certain moment in history, and then from that point to work and strive toward the next high point of de development. I think that we will not be able to solve this crisis unless we agree on the common aims of mankind. And that means we're going to stop imperial, racist, chauvinist, and colonialist and other, any other ambition of that type. And rather than that, we'll state that there's higher aims that connect us as mankind, um, ideas that are far beyond these little things. And the common aims of mankind is what we heard about this morning, is what we heard about yesterday. This is the next uh, scientific avant-garde uh, the development of the Arctic, the development of space. But this has to be, this has to come with a renaissance, a humanist renaissance. And that means that we also have to realize that democracy is what Plato, or, or rather Thucydides, uh, has uh, stated. Democracy being only the flip side of tyranny. And those people who today uh, hold up so-called democracy and use it as <laughs> and use it as an excuse to topple governments uh, in other states, you see that that has nothing to do with uh, democracy. You see it in Europe, in the European Union, but you see it also in the government of the United States, which has uh, put most of the U.S. Constitution out of effect. So uh, the plurality 
of opinions, of <laughs> the plurality of wrong opinions, does not yield truth. It, that's not the way it works. What has to happen is that an ever larger part of humanity has to s start thinking scientifically, and uh, they have to think on a basis that is scientifically verifiable. Then we're dealing with universal ideas, which are eternal. And that's why the concluding panel on this, uh, in this conference is dedicated to this theme. How can we, with the aid of classical culture, realize an image of man that is worth, that, that respects human dignity and celebrates uh, the beauty? Uh, and that in celebrating beauty, man finds his nature. And I think that the musical presentations last night gave everyone a sense of that that this is what makes us human. And with that, I want to give Antonella Banaudi the podium.